Hello and welcome to the Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to look at the Penton Terra IEX, which is an audio encoder decoder. Dynamic CCTV are proud to be partnered with Penton, who are a manufacturer and distributor of audio solutions. They can offer analog, IP, SIP, public address, voice alarm, and also their Terracom IP range, which the Terra IEX is part of. Through our partnership, we're able to offer the full product range or Penton's full range of products throughout all of those product categories. So if you any, have any audio opportunities through a project or through an upcoming installation, please get in touch with your account manager. We can assist you in sourcing and selecting the correct Penton solution to meet your requirements or your site or project requirements moving forward. So Penton are a value-added distributor as well. They can offer you a lot of services to assist you with the audio requirements of your project. They can assist in system design, they can assist in system rack building, training, commissioning and maintenance. So they're a value added distribution, which is always good to know that you're going to get that support as you do with Dynamic CCTV. For a list of some of their high profile projects, which where Penton products have been deployed, you can see a URL on the screen now. Please visit that and you'll be able to see some of the high profile projects there where Penton solutions have been deployed and used. So like I said, this is a Terra IEX. It's an encoder decoder or gateway as I like to call them. It's got a lot of functionality. Today we're going to look at two ways in which this unit can be integrated with your back-end NVR DVR. One is through a line input which offers live audio broadcasting using the line input. There's two line inputs on this unit which can be connected to the line output of a DVR and NVR for remote live audio broadcasting to a single speaker or a group of speakers. And the other is the playing of a pre-recorded message from a contact input trigger or an alarm input trigger which the Terra IX has three of. These can be connected to the alarm output of a DVR or an MVR. If your smart event or VC event is triggered, the alarm output will then trigger this device to play your message. So there's two functions that we're going to look at that integrates it with the Hike Vision backend products. The unit's got PoE functionality. It's also got 24 volt DC input as well, so you can choose your method of powering. It's got serial link connections, which is another way of offering communication to this particular device. And like I said earlier, it's got the two mic line inputs. It's got two line outputs as well, three contact inputs and also a contact output on the unit. So this is a Penton horn speaker. This is the APH30 IP. It's an IP66 horn speaker. It integrates 100% with the Terra IEX. Penton also offer a vast range of, of other speaker designs, different power ratings, different internal or external ratings, ceiling speakers, projector speakers as well. They also offer IP modules that allow conventional analog speakers to be converted to IP and to be used through the Terra IEX as well. So this is a 30 watt unit when powered a DC PSU. It's a 20 watt unit when powered through PoE. Like I said, it's IP66, got you well. So we're gonna look at, first of all, configuring the line input to play live audio broadcasting. And then later in the video, we're gonna look at configuring a unit to play a pre-recorded message upon a contact trigger. We'll look at the lining configuring now. Okay, I'm now at my Terra IEX web front end login page. As I mentioned earlier, both the Terra IEX and the APH30 IP horn speaker web configurable. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is change the IP address from the unit's default address. The Terra IEX has a default address of 192.168.102.10, which you would need to initially connect on. You'll then get this login screen. Now the default login details are admin for the username and admin for the password lowercase so if we log in we now get the actual Terra IEX options web options page so we everything we need to do today is in the setup one tab here and what we've got initially is a, a large page of options there a lot of it's relating to options and functions that we're not going to be looking at today but uh, you can see there straight away top left hand corner we've got our network settings so this is where you would change the IP address range of the unit put it on a network address that fits the network it's going to be functioning on you can use DHCP if you wish or you can manually put the settings in there like I have you can see there that my range has changed got a lot of options there for SIP calling and answering which the units more than capable of doing but that's something that we'll, we're going to look at another time we've also got our system time options but one option that does relate to the line in is the line in gate at the bottom this is a, an option that allows the unit to listen on a sensitivity threshold or a listening threshold and if the listening threshold reaches that point for a set duration the whole time then the actual lining will become active. It's a handy little feature because it protects against false activations through noise on your line. If you set the dB level too low then it could kick in if it detects some noise on the line so if you set that accordingly with a whole time you can protect against that and have the unit only become active when a genuine audio feed comes in. 
so that's that first setting there you can be disabled and aligning will still work it just won't you just won't have the benefit of the threshold and the whole time being in use so other than that everything that we're going to be doing today is under the audio matrix tab and if I just click on that, you can see we've got various options down the left that relate to different inputs and functions of the unit. One that is of obviously relevant to us is the line in option here, which we've got various options for. We can set the line in to be mono or stereo. Depending on the input, we can set a priority level for the unit. If you've got other th th functions and if you've got SIP functions and mic in functions at play, you can set different priority levels. So one takes preference over the other. Obviously, I'm going to leave mine on one today because we're only really using the line in. We can enable disable our two line outputs, and change our audio codec there from the options shown and the two most important options are the IP address and the port when these are actual multicast address and port for transmission from the Terra IEX. So basically when a line in becomes active the Terra IEX will use the multicast IP address and port for broadcasting and then anything listening on that IP address and port will then obviously be a program to pick that up and obviously be become audible and a play or transmit the audio feed. We've also got volume setting on the end there which can be set from 0 to 36 for the actual Terra IX. I'm going to knock that down a bit for our demonstration. Each speaker has specific audio controls as well so they don't all have to be audible on the same level. You can customise each one depending on the environment that they're in. So we set an, a multicast IP address, we set a multicast port and we save that and now we need to configure the speaker to listen to that specific multicast IP address and port. If I just quickly click on the speaker tab, again we need to log in. Now the default IP address for the APH30 IP is 192.168.100.49. So you would need to log in initially on that address. Again the password is admin lowercase, login. We now get a web front end configuration screen of the actual speaker. So to change your IP address to a a suitable address to be on the network we go to settings and we go to IP and again we've got a similar screen to what we've seen on Terra AX we can enable DHCP or we can manually put our new IP address settings in there to match the network that you're on obviously you can see again that I've already done that for my demonstration today the next thing we need to do is go into the function tab at the top and choose Ethernet audio stream and this gives us eight source inputs that the unit can be listening to programmed that can, that can be selected from the top here so we need to add an entry for our line in from the Terra IX so we can see the the multicast IP address is already inputted if I go back to the Terra IX you can see there 239.240.100.1 is the same address so that's already done so we need to change the ports to match our line in port and we need to give it a name I'm going to call it Terra I EX line in. So that's the chosen name, that's the chosen port. We can put a, apply a buffer if we want, if we want to protect against any network delays, just so we don't lose continuity. We can apply a small buffer. If I just save that first. And we can choose our activation source at the top. If we choose, if we set our activation source at the top to be Terra IX line in, which is the, the line that I've programmed there, and save that. And there we are. And that's the programming of the Terra IX and the speaker for line in communication so it's a very simple procedure the only thing to remember is if you've got multiple speakers you need to repeat this procedure for each of the additional speakers so they're all listening on the same port for the line in uh, broadcast and obviously that's selected at the top under activation source the last thing i just want to quick show you in the speaker menu is the actual audio control so you've got a total audio control here that's for everything that the actual speaker is doing and we can choose to set our level here and change our level we'll go all the way down to minus 90 and all the way up to plus 20 db normally we want it to be around well for this demonstration i'm going to set it about around about 2 db hopefully it won't deafen us when i do the demo but you can also set individual volume levels for different inputs like ethernet audio stream can have its own level there voice over ip can have its own level there as well so you could set your you know, your amp out, your, your communal volume, but you can also independently set your specific inputs to have a volume level as well through this DSP function here. So that's some, some, something worth remembering when you're configuring each speaker to be on a specific gain or dB level for its output. Okay, so that's that. We're now going to go back to my setup and I'm just going to demonstrate the line in before we move on to contact message playing function of the unit. Okay, I've now set up basic topology here, basic rig with the Vision NVR. Terra IX in a single speaker. So we've got our 
NVR line out, connected straight into the line in of the Terra IX. The Terra IX is then connected to a network switch through the red cable. We've got the NVR connected to the same switch with the yellow cable, and we've got the APH 30IP horn speaker connected to the switch with the grey cable. So all of them are being configured for line in as shown earlier. So the only thing I really need to do here is demonstrate the actual thing in action, which is simple really, because I just need to talk through from a remote location, which can be the web front end of the NVR, Ivy Mist 4200, Hick Central, or Hick Connect. Hick Connect is what I'm going to use right now. So I'm going to go out the door, quickly speak through my app, and we'll obviously be able to hear it in action. Warning, this is a restricted area. Please leave now. Warning, this is a restricted area. Please leave now. So hopefully you heard that, that's the line output, live audio broadcasting through Hit Connect mobile device, back to the MVR, through the Terra IX, and then to a single or a group of APH 30 IP speakers. So a brief demonstration there how you can use Penton Terracom equipment with the Hit Vision NVR. So we're now going to move on to programming the unit for it, playing a pre-recorded message under a Hit Vision backend event trigger. So now we're going to take a look at how we can program the contact input on the Terra IX, which is three of play a pre-recorded message upon triggering so we can integrate the Terra IX with a Hikvision backend device like an MVR or a DVR using the alarm output of the Hikvision backend unit to then trigger the contact input and play that pre-recorded message to a single speaker or a group of speakers. So we can use a VCA event such as line crossing or intrusion on the on the Hikvision NVR which we'll demonstrate later. Linkage action triggers the alarm output, the alarm output triggers the contact input of the Terra IX and the message is played, which could be a, a message across a, the perimeter of a, a complex if an intruder is, is, is detected and triggers a VCA event on the CCTV. So a handy way in which the two devices integrate with each other. So what we need to do, uh, first of all, is obviously I'm on the homepage of the Terra IEX. If we click on Setup 1, the first thing we need to do is add our speaker or speakers to the Terra IEX, which we can do under the Device tab. So you can see there we've got a detection screen there, which is a little bit like SADP works for Hikvision products. So it's found my two speakers there, which allows me to add them to the Terra IEX unit. You can see that they're both showing us online as well, which is always handy. So we're going to add our first unit. So basically it's just asking you to set up a, a device name, the IP parameters there, and obviously the product type is other. So we can save that and that one's that unit's added to the Terra IEX. The second unit, we just need to make sure that the device name is unique. So I'm just going to put a two on the end. So it differentiates it from the first unit and we can save that and then we've got our two speakers and obviously repeat the procedure however many speakers you've got. So if you want the all of the speakers to, to play the message together you need to basically create a speaker group which is done under the function libraries tab. So if we click on that we, we've got the, the option there device group. There's various options in there which we won't cover today but device group is the one we want and we can add our group here. So it's very simple we just give the, the group a name so I'm going to call it test group and we just select our speakers from the list obviously you can imagine if you'd added many speakers you would have a full list of them here and you can add whichever ones you want so you can custom create many groups on the unit so we're just going to add our two speakers there to the group called test group and save that like so and now that's created my group there as you can see and it's telling me which speakers are in it so the next thing we need to do is create a playlist or upload our media which would be our message or pre-recorded message to the unit so i can click on the the media settings tab here to do that and this allows us to, to upload our message files, our MP3 files to the unit. We can do that from the top here. So we can browse your PC and find the required file. Now I just happen to have one that I've made earlier, which is called warning message. And I'm going to upload that to my Terra IEX XO. And that's a .wav file, which the unit also supports as well. So now we've got our message uploaded or messages you can have a, a collection of messages uploaded to the unit you can even play the collection of messages in a playlist as well so once you've got your messages they will appear here under the disk c which is the internal storage of the terra ix we just need to select the file and it'll appear on this side which is the playlist section so we can first of all give our a playlist a name so i'm just going to call it again test playlist keep things simple and we've also got a repeat count so you can see there zero means no repeat and then we've got obviously 
65535 which means it'll just keep repeating forever so you can obviously put a figure in there however many times you want the message to repeat so I'm gonna have mine repeat once so I'm gonna put a one in there and I'm gonna save this playlist to the internal storage and you can see it's now appeared at the bottom left hand corner there as a test playlist so we've got our speaker group, we've got our test playlist. The last thing we need to do is configure our contact input to play this message under the particular parameters. So we've got the I.O. control tab here at the top. Click on that and you can see we've got input two, input one, two and three. Input two is already set there to be logic, which is one we, which one we want to choose. For the function, we want to choose the message button option. You've got various options there for different functions. But the message button option is the one we want for it to play an actual message. We want to select the mode as paging, which it's already set to there. It's very important the security source is ticked because this ensures that the message will play in its entirety. If there's additional triggers on the contact input, having this tick box here will make sure that the message is not interrupted, does not start playing again or does not stop playing. It will play in its entirety. And we've also got internal test playlists, which is the one I've just created. Again, if you had various playlists, you'd be able to choose them from this drop down list. And lastly, we've got the, the target, which is either of the individual speakers or the group as a whole. So we're going to select the group as a whole to play. So that's how you would configure your input controller settings, your contact inputs, which I've done on input two, which is where I've got my physical connection on the Terror IX, which we'll look at shortly. So I'm going to save that. So what we've got now connected up is, if you can see, we're using contact input two and ground. So we've got input one, two, three and ground there so there's your contact inputs there being used and that's wired directly into the alarm output one of the NVR so we're going to configure our VCA event to trigger alarm output one which is going to trigger contact input two on Terra AX and the message is going to play so let's get back to my computer and we'll look at configuring the VCA event and then doing a demonstration okay so we've reached the last part of today's video which is to quickly demonstrate the Terra AX contact input trigger and the playing of the pre-recorded message so I'm going to do that through a VCA event a smart event from my deep in mind NVR so it's a case of quickly clicking on the event and going down to smart event I'm sure you all know and have done this in the past so we won't spend too much time explaining what this is all about I'm just going to quickly draw a line crossing activation area on the screen like so which I can walk through trigger the event Everything else can stay is on human 50% sensitivity, that's all fine. The main thing we need to do here is under linkage action, we just need to enable the triggering of the alarm out on the MVR. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using alarm output one, so I'm just going to put a tick box there. It basically means when the VCA line crossing is triggered, alarm output one will go closed circuit. That will create a trigger on the contact input of the Terra IX and the message will play. So that's pretty much the procedure there it's fairly simple and straightforward so I just need to go back to my live view and I'm going to bring up the chosen camera in question I do have my rules enabled so you'll be able to see the actual triggering take place on the screen so there we are so there's my line crossing and there's our audio rig at the back of my test room all uh, right so off I go I'm just going to trigger this and with any luck we'll hear the message play warning this is a restricted area Please leave now. Warning, this is a restricted area. Please leave now. Warning, this is a restricted area. Please leave now. Warning, this is a restricted area. Please leave now. Okay, so I'm sure you've seen on the screen there, I triggered the actual line crossing twice. And on each trigger, we got the, the pre-recorded message to play from the Terra IX. Obviously, I put it on a repeat count of once, so the message played twice on each triggering. But again, that's customizable in the menu, as we've seen earlier in this video. So that's just two ways in which the Terra IX audio gateway integrates with Hikvision back-end devices for perimeter message playing and also two-way audio as well. If you've got any further technical questions on what you've seen today in the video, please get in touch with our technical support department where we'll be more than happy to assist. Any opportunities or questions on the full range of Penton products, please get in touch with your account manager. As I said earlier, Penton offer a whole range of, of professional audio solutions from PA to voice alarm to SIP to the full Terracom IP range. So a lot of solutions there to, to cater for any opportunity you might have. Thanks for watching today's video. Please keep an eye on our YouTube channel for more up and coming videos in the near future. Thanks for now and bye.